With no time left for human reaction, the Carney's Sea Whiz acted alone and didn't miss. At 0300 local time in the Red Sea on December 16, 2023, though quiet, the crew aboard the USS Carney is already battle hardened. But tonight, the Hooties would try a brand new tactic that before this had only been studied in the classroom and not aboard a real US Navy ship until now. At that time, watchstanders down below in the ship's combat information center were monitoring their consoles for any signs of unusual activity. Whether it was a commercial flight, military aircraft, or whatever, it was the job of the watchstanders to hook all tracks and make reports about the contact's speed, course, altitude, and intentions. During this rather mundane task, all of a sudden, a single radar blip appeared, then a few more. But they weren't normal. Because of the ongoing conflict, many aircraft were avoiding the area altogether, but these blips weren't following any established commercial corridor. As the watchstanders began looking at the tracks, they were trying to figure out what exactly they were. Was it an airliner, a military aircraft, a helicopter? In order to do this, one of the watchstanders began looking at this transponder and cycling through the different modes and codes. These should have given some kind of indication of what it was, but he was horrified at what he saw. No matter how many times he cycled through it and refreshed the inputs, he kept getting the same thing. Every mode and code was blank. Worse yet, it was still getting closer. Why this matters is because there is a transponder aboard every military or civilian aircraft that will broadcast across certain modes, and they each mean different things. For example, Mode 1 is used for military identification and what country the aircraft is from. Mode 2 is a military aircraft's tail number. Then commercial flights have different modes, like Mode 3 Alpha that have their flight designation. Then Mode Charlie is any aircraft's altitude. The codes that can appear next to the mode mean different things. Like if an aircraft starts squawking 7700 next to Mode 3 Alpha, that means they are suffering a general in-flight emergency. But having none of these and still getting good radar paint means there is a big problem. As soon as the watchstanders realized that none of the inbound contacts had any modes or codes, this could only mean one thing. Something bad was about to happen. Because each contact speed was around 100 knots, they were much too slow to be a missile. They could have been a helicopter, but the only way to know for sure was to use this system. The device located on this ship's side here is called a Slick 32. This is Carney's eyes and ears when it comes to interrogating and identifying radars. This is because, no matter what, whether it is a ship, aircraft, missile, or helicopter, that thing is going to have some kind of radar on most of the time. With its ability to scan for frequencies in the 2 to 18 gigahertz bands at ranges exceeding 200 nautical miles, the Slick 32 can basically confirm electronically what spy radar sees since it compares what it picks up to its mission library that contains the frequencies of thousands of systems. How this works in practice is if Spy picks up a contact at 150 miles, it's squawking military codes and has a known radar of a particular aircraft, then you have a positive ID. However, these contacts are not squawking any modes or codes and have no radars emitting anything, and are flying erratically in a big group. Because of this, it can only mean one thing, a drone swarm. After positively confirming that the Carney was under attack by a drone swarm, the ship's tactical action officer began forming a plan. But there wasn't much time. Carney had not picked them up because of the incredibly small radar cross-section of the drones, about 0.01 square meters, combined with flying just 10 feet above the water's surface until they were 15 miles away. At this distance, in less than 7 minutes, the first Shahid would be plowing right into the side of the ship. And despite only having a roughly 100-pound warhead, it was still powerful enough that it could take out vulnerable radar and communication systems on the ship's mast that would force it to leave the theater and they could not let that happen. Because the drones were coming from multiple approach angles, the TAO decided to engage the largest group first before focusing on the smaller ones. With the largest group of eight drones bearing 090 relative just off their starboard side, the TAO decided to fire this weapon at them. The missile you see leaving the vertical launch cell right now is called the Standard Missile 2, or SM2. This missile is the bread and butter of naval air defense. With a speed of Mach 3.5, it'll take just about 30 seconds to intercept the Shahed 136 drones. 
And while you might think sending a roughly $2 million missile to knock out targets with a cumulative worth of less than a G-Wagon is not a smart move, it actually is. Because of the individually tiny small radar cross-section of each drone, taking out a large group of them whose RCS together equals that of a large missile means that the SM-2 will easily be able to see it. This is because as the SM-2 closes with the target in the final few meters, it turns on its active seeker to get it the last few seconds of flight near the target. With a warhead containing roughly 5,000 metal fragments spread across 7,000 square meter effective radius, this means that a single SM-2 can easily shred this large group of drones in one shot without the need for a follow-up shot. But destroying this first group is just what the Hooties wanted. During swarm attacks, the enemy will do a lot of things to confuse the target. One of these ways is to put unarmed decoy drones in large groups. Because of this, the target, in this case the US ship, will first focus on the big group. However, they may fail to see the single drones flying erratically from other angles, which is the real threat. But a US destroyer is no average ship. While this might overwhelm a less capable country's navy, this is just some extra target practice in for the Carney's crew as they shift focus to the next threat. With the largest drone group taken out, six single drones were still inbound from both ahead and astern. With ships that can only fire missiles in one general direction, this would force the captain to choose if they wanted to get hit in the bridge, which would take out command and control, or in the stern, which would likely take out the steering. However, with Spy Radar's 360-degree coverage, thanks to its three-phase arrays on board the Kearney, the ship is able to fire at the single drone coming astern while keeping her bow focused on the five drones ahead, and it is all thanks to this weapon. This is known as the RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile. Destroyers like the Kearney carry this missile inside so-called quad packs of four missile bundles inside a single VLS cell. With a speed of Mach 4 right out the gate, these missiles are known as point defense weapons since they only have a 27 nautical mile range. However, unlike SM-2 missiles, these SMs have a special feature that makes them perfect for taking out fast-moving targets close aboard. In this feature, known as homing all the way, the ship can illuminate the drones right as the SM leaves its VLS cell. This means that as soon as the missile is airborne, there is not even a wasted millisecond as it tries to orient itself toward the target. As soon as it clears the ship, it makes a beeline right for the drone, and it worked beautifully. With the Carney still facing forward towards the five drones, barreling down from her front, a single SM screamed out of one of her aft VLS cells. Because the Shahid drones did not have an operator that could manually move the drone out of the way, it kept flying its pre-planned waypoints without even taking evasive action. But it's not like it could avoid the SM anyway, since it executed a 50G terminal maneuver from above that absolutely deleted this drone. But despite this win, there was still the fact that there were five more drones barreling down at the Kearney just five miles off her bow. But thankfully, they were flying right into the sights of this weapon. Do you see this big, artillery-looking cannon on the front of the ship? It's called an MK-45 5-inch gun and can fire rounds up to 10 miles away and 17 kilometers in elevation. With an internal drum holding up to 20 rounds, this old gun can still put out some impressive firepower. However, it is not shooting the round you're thinking of. Although the 5-inch can shoot a variety of ammunition, from inert training rounds to high-explosive point detonation rounds to star shells and about half a dozen other types, none of them quite work well for drone swarms. This is because when taking down targets like the Shahed, the crew is not going to get a skin-on-skin -skin hit with this. The best they can do is get within a few meters of the target, but that is much easier said than done. Well, if you're not a supercomputer, that is. The command and decision system supercomputers run millions of calculations a second. The contact's current course, speed, altitude, and historical track data are used to estimate how many seconds the crew needs to set the fuse on these rounds. These are called MK419 controlled variable timing rounds and will turn these shot heads into nothing more than junk floating on top of the water. Containing about 7 kilograms of explosives, this round just needs to get within 100 meters of the target to damage it and 50 meters to completely destroy it. And it doesn't even have to hit directly since each round has a fuse at the top of it and the 5-inch gun automatically sets to the correct fuse before putting it into the breach. This completely takes human error out of it and drastically speeds it up since a person doesn't have to use a special tool, measure, double check, and then load. 
Sailors down in Deep Mag can just be chucking rounds onto the ammunition elevator and constantly refilling the 20 round drum during prolonged fights. And it worked beautifully. Well, at least for a little bit. Due to not expecting to have to fire CVT rounds, the gunner's mates frantically downloaded the high explosive rounds with CVT rounds as soon as the ship called General Quarters away at the start of the engagement. With the gun now fully loaded with CVT rounds, the TAO gave the order to fire when the drones were just five miles away from the Kearney. Within seconds, the Kearney blasted five CVT rounds towards the target. Though only visible on the 5-inch gun's night vision camera, the crew could see huge puffs of black smoke and bits of drones falling into the water. But there was a problem. The sailor manning the consular and the CIC suddenly got an alert that the fuse setter on the gun had malfunctioned. This was typical considering how rarely that function gets used. It broke only after a few rounds were fired. With the 5-inch unable to properly set fuses on the CVT rounds, they were effectively worthless. But thankfully, the crew had one last result. If you look here behind the 5-inch mount, you'll see a weaponized R2-D2 that is called a Close-In Weapon System, or SeaWiz for short. Destroyers configured like the Carney will have one SeaWiz up forward and one back aft. For this fight, the crew is going to use the SeaWiz up forward to take out the last two remaining drones. With just a few seconds before impact, there is not a lot of time. But that is all the SeaWiz needs. Unlike other combat systems on board, the SeaWiz is its own internal system. If you look here at the SeaWiz, it has its own internal tracking radar, so it doesn't even get inputs from spy radar. With the ability to track up to several dozen targets at once, it's almost like a mini spy radar except with a much limited range, with a tracking range of around 10 miles and an engagement range of around 3 miles. It engages the target through the six-barreled Gatling gun. Firing 20mm shells at a rate of 4,500 rounds per minute, the SeaWiz can empty its entire magazine in less than 20 seconds of firing. But it won't mean much, since with every one second burst that goes out, around 50 to 100 rounds are going down range. And the craziest part is it can do this all without a human even pressing a button. Contrary to popular belief, the SeaWiz has several different operation modes. In a situation like this where there are tons of targets coming from different angles, the TAO almost certainly ordered the SeaWiz to be switched to a mode called Anti-Air Warfare Auto Mode, or AAW Auto. In this mode, the SeaWiz is acting entirely on its own. If its radar detects something that is fast enough and coming at the ship, it will fire at it. By removing the human from the loop, the SeaWiz can fire at targets instantly. And in a fight with just seconds left, there is nothing to spare. As the final two drones close within two miles of the ship, the SeaWiz opens up with its famous burnt sound. Although not nearly as cool as the Air Force A-10, it is still an awesome weapon that absolutely shreds these drones within seconds. With these last two drones taken out, the crew cautiously scans all their sensors, looking for more targets. Spy is looking out for a potential missile attack while the crew moves the Slick 32 around looking for the telltale sign of a missile's homing radar. This is because oftentimes drone attacks are followed up with missile attacks and vice versa to confuse and disorient the intended target. But the crew of the Kearney is no ordinary crew. They are battle hard and tested already. And the Hooties will soon find out in the roughly 51 engagements the crew will go on to fight during its 2023-2024 deployment. Bye for now.